I'm back working on the PDP-8 clone. In the previous video in this series I found a fault with one of the regulator boards. In fact I found a similar fault in all three regulator boards in that a number of the pass transistors had failed. And um, I think one on this board was still working, but the other two had uh, essentially gone open circuit and there was no 5 volt uh, supply. This is really a triple 5 volt regulator and uh, each of these is about 8 amps and there's another similar board very similar circuit but bigger heat sinks and each of the three 5 volt supplies on that is 10 amps so uh, very simple very straightforward now I did show a schematic in the previous video that was actually wrong so I just wanted to correct this and um, we'll look at that before we get onto the board and essentially in this video I want to try and get this working I needed to replace these devices and the replacements have now been delivered but before we get onto that just a correction to the schematic now I showed um, a schematic in the previous video and I'd reverse engineered it but I was only really interested in the inputs and outputs I wasn't really that concerned with the inner workings of the circuit so it was fine for that purpose um, but I decided because I was showing this on the video that I better do a proper job and I've gone back over and uh, redrawn the schematic so it's now correct and I said there wasn't any protection on the output and uh, it turns out there is some protection but not what I was expecting uh, I've got this large diode these are all exactly the same circuit just three the same so this large diode I can't read what's written on it it's too badly corroded um, and I assumed, as you can see on my drawing, it was a Zener diode. That would make sense to clamp the output voltage. So if um, this pass transistor goes dead short, this plus 10 volts, very high current supply on the input, very large capacitor, so it really needs some sort of protection on the output. This feeds into uh, many very complex um, PCBs with hundreds of TTL devices. So you'd expect some sort of protection on here. And there's nothing else, there's no crowbar, nothing else, so I assumed it was a Zener. So what I did uh, was to start testing it, and I got the uh, multimeter out. So we'll start off with a multimeter. We'll switch this into diode test mode. So hopefully you can see that. And just to be on the safe side, because I was getting some strange results, I've lifted one end of this particular device, and if I clip on the leads one way around you can see you're getting uh, what appears to be a diode junction which you would do in one direction with a zener um, but if we now reverse the leads and we clip them on the other way around it's open circuit now it could be because the voltage of the zener uh, is not going to indicate on the multimeter so the next thing i did was to start testing it with a power supply so i'll just move the camera so you can see the power supply so hopefully you can see the supply. I've just got it clipped across the what uh, I assume was a Zener diode. And um, what I started doing was applying a voltage. That's why I lifted one end of the device off the board so I wouldn't do any damage to anything else. Shouldn't damage anything anyway, but I uh, just wanted to be safe. And I've got the supply set to five volts, uh, half an amp current limit. So we'll switch this on. And we're drawing half an amp as we should do in one direction because it would just be a um, essentially a diode and you can see we're getting just in the 0.8 volts drop which makes sense I'll swap the leads around so we should now be in the um, reverse direction and this is where the Zener uh, action should start so we'll turn it on no current that makes sense we're only at 5 volts so we'll increase the voltage we'll go up to uh, 6 volts so I was expecting it to start clamping at somewhere around 5.6, maybe 6.2 volts. Uh, we're at 6 volts, still zero current, so we'll go up to 7 volts. Still nothing, we'll go up to 12 volts. So still nothing. If we go up to 20 volts, still no current. So it's actually not a Zener diode, it's just a diode. Okay, so looking at the schematic, um, because we have quite a number of um, voltage regulators all feeding into uh, a collection of circuits that are all interconnected, 
and all being powered up and powered off at the same time. You quite often put a diode um, across the output like this and sometimes across the input as well which is how I had it shown in the uh, previous schematic and it just protects the supply from being reverse biased as the various circuits may start feeding current into it as the uh, machine is turned on or off. Um, but a, a Zener will do that anyway, so a Zener diode will do exactly the same thing and it will prevent the uh, rail going negative on a plus 5 volt supply. Um, but then it will have the added advantage that when um, the voltage goes too high in the positive direction it will start to clamp. So I can't read what's on here. I assumed it was maybe a faulty Zener. They do sometimes go faulty like this, although it's rare for them to read no current at all. So I tested the other two on this board and they do exactly the same thing. As I say, unfortunately I don't have a schematic for this other than the one I've drawn and uh, for some reason there's no part numbers on that. Um, so I can't tell exactly what these are but as I said there are other boards in the machine with identical circuits or what I thought was identical circuits. So I went and grabbed one of those and this is the 30 amp version of this. This is supposed to be a 20 amp uh, 5 volt regulator. This is supposed to be 30 amp, um, although it says 5 volt 20 amp on it, which is kind of strange. Um, but looking at this, it's an almost identical circuit. There's a different arrangement for the, um, the op amp, which is uh, one of these devices on this particular board. Uh, but there is a similar uh, arrangement for the um, current sense resistors and there's a clamp diode on these as well and I can read what's on here so I don't know if you can see this but um, these are MR501s and they are just uh, high current diodes so they're not Zeners, they're just diodes the same as as we're seeing on here so these aren't Zeners, they're just uh, ordinary diodes which is kind of strange so if the owner's watching this I'd recommend at some point you pull all these boards out and put some high current uh, maybe 6.2 volt Zeners in here. They'll still give reverse protection for the power supply, um, but they'll also give you protection as well because at the moment there's a very little protection on the outputs of these. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is we'll start off with just um, a single uh, channel on here just to make sure that um, it's going to work. I'll put one of the new devices in and uh, we'll power it up and see if it actually regulates. I've got a new pass transistor fitted, same type as the original, looks like it's a better quality one and I've resoldered the diode into place and what I need to do now is test this to see if it works. So all I need to do with this is provide it with plus 10 volts on the input, a load on the output and plus 14 volts to power the regulator. So I get this wired up and to make life easier I as usual have made a small test jig and this just plugs onto the uh, bottom of each of the connectors. So it's identical pinouts on all three, so I can put it onto the first one, test it, test the next one, test the next one. Um, quite often, I've been doing this for a very long time, and sometimes uh, I'll make videos and I show things and don't really explain them, mostly because it doesn't occur to me to explain them. It's just something I've been doing for a long time. Uh, but somebody asked me a question, they were in the lab with me the other day, and they asked me a question as to why quite often I have things like this, which is a, um, a wire of one colour and a plug of a different colour. And I do it quite a lot, so I'll have, for example, a grey wire uh, and a red plug, or a green plug and a blue wire. Uh, sometimes it's a black and a black. Uh, the reason I do it is because I've only got um, a limited number of wire colours. I've got eight Essentially, I use um, silicon wire, but um, it only really comes easily available in eight different colours, and quite often I need many more uh, colours. Uh, and also, I don't want to have hundreds of reels of different colour wires. So, the reason I do something like this is a colour code. So, this is red and grey, this is green and white, yellow and yellow. So, it gives me an almost unlimited number of colour combinations, so I can have any number of um, wires and colour combinations I want and all I need to do is at the plug end is remember what the green and white is for 
uh, or what the red and grey is for. It's just an easy way of cutting down the number of uh, reels of wire I need to have uh, available to me to make this kind of uh, test jig. OK, I'll get this uh, connected up and we'll see if the regulator circuit is alive. I've got the board hooked up. I've got it connected to one of my Kunkin loads. So this is on the output of the regulator. Should give us around 5 volts. It can be adjusted, but we should be somewhere fairly close. And um, I've got the inputs set to plus 14 volts for the input supply for the regulator. And that's the onboard uh, regulator. And I've got plus 10 volts, 6 amps limits set for the main 5 volt pass transistor regulator. I'm just going to turn the one of the lab lights off and try and cut down on this flicker. Um, it's very obviously very annoying, but uh, it's some interaction between my camera and the lab lights, and also you'll hopefully be able to see the displays uh, a lot better anyway. So I'll just turn one of the lights off. I'm going to turn the. I'm going to start by turning the regulator on, and then shortly after I'll turn the 10 volts on. It shouldn't really make any difference uh, which way around I do this. Um, but we are getting 5.18 volts. So that's looking quite promising so far. We are at least getting some form of regulation. And I'm going to decrease the um, resistance. We'll go down to 50 ohms and see if that gives us the expected current. 0 0.1 ohms, that looks correct. The voltage has sagged slightly. We'll drop a little bit, of course. We've got um, some resistance in the leads and also it's not going to be a perfect regulator anyway. Uh, okay so it looks fairly promising. There's nothing getting particularly hot. There's only about one watt being drawn from the 10 volt rail. I've got the current limit on the 14 volt rail set at 0.1 amps. It's drawing uh, about 7 milliamps so that's looking uh, quite, uh, quite promising as well. There's nothing drawing all the current yet. So we'll try changing down to 10 ohms. Okay, we're getting half an amp at 5 volts. It's down to 5.15 amps. And we'll go down further. We'll go to 5 ohms. And we're now at 1 amp. Going to go to one ohm, and we're just under five amps. The fan on the um, bench supply started up. Okay, that's looking quite good. And finally, I'm just going to adjust it to give us around six amps output, which I think is about the maximum these are likely to give out in their uh, normal operation. OK, so we're at 6 amps. The voltage has gone down to 4.8 volts, although a lot of that will be a voltage drop in the leads and the connections. You can see as I wiggle these around, um, it does vary quite a lot. So I suspect that when it's properly installed, we'll be getting something very close to 5 volts. But uh, I will adjust these once the uh, machine is up and running. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, replace the other two devices, test both of those regulators, and on the assumption that it works, I will power and load all three and leave it running for a while. And assuming it survives, then it's ready to be refitted to the machine. I just then need to do exactly the same thing with the other two regulator cards. So I'll just get uh, the two channels on this card done and we'll see how it uh, fares. The voltage on the centre regulator is a bit too low, so I'm going to adjust that. It's down at five, uh, 4 4.6 volts. Now it's not surprising that it's, it's changed. We have put a completely new pass transistor in, but we just need to give it a small adjustment. And we'll take it up to pretty much match with the other one at 4.8 volts. I'll readjust that later if I need to. And now I'll move on to the third regulator. The third one is also a bit low, so I'll adjust that one as well. back up to around 4.8 volts and uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to hook up all three channels at once I'm just going to leave this running 
Um, I'm not going to video it, so it'll be running for several hours and I will need to turn the extractor on that's sitting above us, uh, otherwise this will very rapidly overheat. Now, it's actually not too bad, it's um, only about 5 watts uh, of course for each one of these that's uh, been dissipated at the moment, uh, but it will eventually get hotter and hotter and I obviously don't want to fry it uh, now that it seems to be working. So I'm going to run them all at uh, 6 amps for maybe 2 hours and um, I'll then move on to the other regulator boards, do the same thing with those and assume that uh, all three work, uh, I'll put them back in the machine and so in the next video we'll have another go at powering up the uh, computer and see what it does.